Joe McKasick, Vice President of the Canal Society of New Jersey, and we're here at the farm here in Denville, talking about some of the things that the Canal Society does, and we've got this nice display. Pictures of Waterloo and pictures of some of the things the Canal Society is involved in. Now, does the Canal uh, Society, is it the Morris Canal? We are involved with all the towpath canals in New Jersey. This the, the Morris and the DNR Canal. Uh -huh. As you can see from our display, part of the operation at, uh, at Waterloo Village now. We used to have only our museum there now, but now we're for the last three years we've been taking a leadership role, trying to open up the village again. We have our boat ride and our museum and our festival every June. And this year we've got the Smith Surf open again in the Bataan Cabin. And every year we get a little bit more of the village back in shape. It's fantastic. We've got uh, two more uh, Heritage Days left this year in October, the 10th and the 24th. And um, it is free. So the price is right. And where do they take place, these uh, Heritage Days? At Waterloo Village. and. Uh, Partially in Warren, partially in Sussex County. Mm -hmm. I always go there. It's uh, not far from Bla well, Blairstown is pretty far. It's right yeah. off Route 80. Conveniently located. Now, I'm sort of interested in the canal, uh, the Morris Canal. What can you tell us about the Morris Canal? The Morris Canal was built in the 1830s. It's built to carry coal from mines in Pennsylvania to markets that they hope to develop uh, along the eastern seaboard in uh, New York and Jersey City. And uh, it came right through uh, the center of Morris County and uh, helped to open up that whole area. And as you can see from the, the map that you're photographing now, those are all places where you can still find remains of the canal. One of the projects of the Canal Society, that's the the Greenway uh, concept, and uh, we're trying to buy back pieces of the canal, put them into public venue, make them places where people can come and learn some things about history and about the canal. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one very good site in Danville, and that's the uh, Piers, right? Piers store, and uh, right across the street, the Sullivan property is a quarter mile long section of canal that's now uh, owned by uh, the town of Danville. And, uh, the Eagle Scout Project just put a piece of walking trail on that and we hope in the near future to have some signage and have that um, uh, open for the public. Mm -hmm. And you're right, Pierce Store is an original canal store dating you know, back to the 1860s and is a marvelous place now. It's a, it's a restaurant, a fine restaurant to visit. It still has the pictures of the canal in it. Yes, actually. it does. It's been uh, through several hands in past years, but the original uh, people who, uh, who acquired the building restored it lovingly, and it's still very much the, the old store that uh, was tried by the boatman. Mm -hmm. I see right here. Now, the pier store was a lock, wasn't it? There was a lock there, yes. Right. And there's planes. So basically, the uh, canal consisted of locks and planes. What well, is the canal had to climb up and over the highlands of New Jersey, uphill all the way to Lake Apaca, keeping water open, and then downhill all the way to uh, to Jersey City. And that was a quite a quite an accomplishment. A combined elevation change of almost 1,700 feet. So to accomplish that, they had to have not only canal locks but canal planes, and you can see across the bottom of that uh, illustration there's a, a drawing of a, um, a, a diagrammatic drawing of an inclined plane, the boat's being hauled up uh, as much as 100 feet at a time. So that's what made it possible to build the canal where it was built. Mm -hmm. Now what is the lock? What is the, uh, the, the, the um, what do you call it, the mechanics of a lock? Well, a lock is a very simple technology. Uh, this old technology when the canal was built in the 1830s and it's a stone chamber that connects two sections of canal and it's got gates on both ends and you can float a boat into that chamber, close the doors and either add water or subtract water, whichever the case might be, and then bring the canal boat to, um, um, to the next level. You either fill the lock and the boat floats up or you empty the lock and the boat floats down and uh, off you go to the next place. But the uh, canal locks were only good to 
deal with about 10 or 12 feet of elevation in those days. And of course, the inclined planes, those were new, that was new technology. And those were built to help the canal um, go up and down elevation changes of you know 80 to 100 feet at a time. So that's what made it possible to cross the highlands. Mm -hmm. And there are several locations where you can see inclined planes. One of the best ones is in Ledgewood. Canal Park in Ledgewood is just that, you know, it's, it's, uh, sort of, you know what that diagram is, is based on. And uh, we've just gotten grant money to uh, to refurbish uh, all the stonework in that turbine chamber, the drawing you see back there. So it's uh, a place you can go and visit right now. Where do you have it on the board? Where's that uh, that plane? This is Waterloo on the board, okay. but here um, Canal Park is right there. Okay. If you can see right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fascinating. Thank you so much.